This is uh, HMS Pandora. She was, uh, some of you may know, 24-gun, sixth-rate frigate, designed by Sir John Williams, senior surveyor and senior ship designer to the Navy Board. She was based on Williams's porcupine class of frigates. On the 2nd of March, 1778, her keel was laid in the private Grove Street Deptford Yard of Adams, Barnard and Dudman. 18 and a half months later, on the 17th of May, 1779, she was launched. She rose to fame when in 1790, with a complement of 134 men, under the command of Captain Edward Edwards, she was sent in search of the mutineers from HMS Bounty. Arriving in Tahiti, Edwards captured 12 of the mutineers. However, his search for Fletcher Christian and the others, of course, was unsuccessful as by then they had fled to Pitcairn Island. In trying to discover a new passage through the Endeavour Strait, Pandora was wrecked on the Great Barrier Reef. 31 crew and four mutineers were lost. The rest of the company, after an epic journey, eventually arrived in Timor. And it was in 1977 that the wreck was discovered, providing a huge amount of data about the vessel. In these two short talks, I will show you slides of my building of HMS Pandora. I've tried roughly to place these under loose topic headings. I'm afraid the slides are not necessarily in chronological order of the build, as they were taken for my own personal record, and so their quality does vary. I began the build, would you believe it, in 2006. For quite a lot of that time, I was in full-time employment, so uh, uh, you know, months would go by. My intention was to build an exact replica of the full-size ship at a 148 scale. I also planned to make everything myself. On the whole, this was achieved by the time the model was completed. I hardly dare say this, 14 years later. My main material was kiln-dried pear and Castello boxwood. She's fitted out as she was for her voyage to Tahiti, with the exception, I think it's already been pointed out, that I haven't included Pandora's box, the cell in which the mutineers were shackled and held, um, which was rigged on the quarterdeck. The interior of the model is complete, with the exception of the all-up deck, the cabin bulkheads, and the pigsty. First of all, a slight digression, just to show you the workshop and some of the tools that I use. There's my workshop interior on the left there, and there's the actual shed. It is designed actually as a workshop. It's a 10 by 8 foot shed. And as far as possible, I do try to use hand tools. However, I have a good selection of many Proxon machines and also an ever-increasing library of reference books. Top right there, that bookcase has filled up quite considerably, actually, since that photograph was taken. The basic hull. This is one of the very first photographs that I took. And so really, the, you know, the beginning story of it all is probably a little bit missing because obviously the, the framing is, is getting on. This was taken in September 2008. I spent ages just trying to decide how to fix my frames accurately onto the keel and decided, I suppose a little bit like Harold's card, I think that's right, to make a jig fitted above the baseboard though, uh, at the waterline level into which the frames could be fitted. There's one of the frames bottom left there of that slide about to be fitted, although I think the, the chocks in it have yet to be sanded down. Once all the frames uh, had been fitted, the hull was strengthened by adding the keelson, obviously, uh, the limber boards, thick stuff, and deck clamps. The deck clamps were particularly hard to fit, trying to work out the exact height above the baseboard. Also shown in this slide are the three mast steps, with the forward one shown in more detail there on the right. I should also slightly digress and say that uh, my main interest in this uh, project was the structure of the original vessel 
and also uh, seeing whether I could reproduce it at this scale. So it's also an exercise, I suppose, in, in small woodwork, if, if that's the right way to put it. Eventually the hull was removed from his jig, gun and sweet ports created, knee of the head and the stern timbers, which you can just about see there, were added. The main whale was installed, and there's a picture of it top right. And again, you can see it's fitted as best I could to the original planking plan. And then I dyed it with black acrylic ink. My idea has always been to use as many natural products on the vessel, and also to try and get the wood to show itself in its best way. So there's the main whale actually just fitted. There it is with the colouring on it. And now the hull having been inverted, I added these longitudinal spreaders to act as guides for the planking. You can also see the stern timbers again there and of course the transoms. I had no end of trouble with these stern timbers and in the end, I actually had to rebuild them. Planking here is in progress. First on, of course, was the garbage strake, shown there, top left. You can also see my pencil marks there, which allowed me to space the planks correctly. As I advanced, I did my best to lay the planks in accordance with the Admiralty pattern of the day. The hull planks were glued and tree nailed. I use, I suspect as most people do, uh, on the whole the bamboos that I put whittled down to the right size onto the frame. So uh, glued and tree nailed onto the frames and then with black paper glued on their size to simulate corking and tar. And then of course they were sanded down, which is about to happen in the slide to the right there and then covered actually with tongue oil, which you'll see in the next slide. There we are, it's looking slightly different now. But before completing this, I realized that the planks immediately below the whale were laid incorrectly. So uh, I spent quite a long time removing the original planks, top left there, and then eventually the correct planking was uh, installed. Uh, I can't remember what you call this pattern, this sort of an sort of an anchor crocodile pattern, which presumably gave the hull uh, some extra longitudinal strength. Then came the planking above the whale, for which I used Costello boxwood, as this is a slighter colour than the pear. And you can see how this planking game was fashioned to make way for the gun ports. There we are, just sort of, and also the sweet ports. Next up, the rails on the side of the hull could be added and the gun and sweep ports lined. I found that these railings, you can, I think these are probably laid between the hull planking, which how it was indicated on the plans that I had. But I found it much easier in the end to simply just plank all the way up and then lay the rails over the top of it. I've shown that photograph on the right hand side there because the mouldings for the railings were made by running a pre-cut steel scraper over the wood, which gave it its shape. Lids with their hinges here for the sweet ports, because they are so small, they don't actually work. On the slide to the left, you can see the end of the deck gun deck scuppers as well there, coming out at the top of the main whale. That gives you an idea of the sweet ports top right. And there again, uh, bottom right is uh, one of the ports in place. My first real metal work came with the hanging of the rudder and the fish plates. The gudgeons top left and the pintles, like most of my metal work, was made from brass and was silver soldered to make the various parts. So the top left there, there's a silver solder between that bracket and the gudgeon pin there. After I had actually made them the right shapes and all the rest of it, I blackened them using a birchwood casey brass black solution. Before I go into fitting out some of the external hull, I'm afraid my little box here doesn't quite cover the full of the slide, but there we are. A little bit of a digression. 
the glue that I used was always a PVA. I, I have an allergy to the super glues, which is a pity because I think they could be quite useful. So I had to use virtually all the time a PVA. But say a bit of digression because I've discovered the use of the old fashioned glues, which pearl glue, which I think has got huge benefits. But that might be something that folks want to pick up later. There now, I wanted to show you some of the bolts that I made because it seemed to me that it was one of the most fundamental chores in this type of model building. Bottom left shows some of my straight bolts, blackened and ready to fit. If you look carefully, you can see the preened heads. It's not a very good photograph, I'm afraid, to these bolts. Usually I'm using a 0.8 millimeter brass rod. And if I wanted these to have a firm fit, I would use a file to roughen up the shanks. Top left shows a ring bolt in the process of being made. First of all, the ring would be made out of a brass rod and silver soldered. And then that copper wire, which is probably about a 0.5 millimeter wire, was twisted to form a thread. And indeed, the silver solder was right there in the middle between the twisted bit of copper ring there. The right hand picture, just I concluded that, as you can see, the ring bolts in place around the mast partner. I think I must have made the gun ports at least twice, but here they are, the ones that I was satisfied with, with their ironwork made and installed. The bottom left just shows one of the hinges under production. That's the actual hinge bit there, which goes there. And I think that piece there, that piece of brass rod goes into the uh, hull. As I mentioned, I had to redo the stern timbers to ensure that the timbers for the stern lights, the windows and the deck transoms were in the correct place and of the correct size. This was a particularly fiddly job, but in the end, I got it right, at least I think I did. In the, in the initial building, I think I made many mistakes. Um, so really this was uh, uh, catching up on all of those. Once the stern timbers were in place, the upper transom uh, in the middle could be installed along with the railings. And above this, I'm not quite sure what you call this particular bit, was a solid piece of wood. The pegs are holding it in place, which was uh, over which the taffrail was laid. The photograph on the right shows how that this piece of wood was eventually planked. I did it that way because I think it was just an easier way of doing it. I suppose you could actually just plank it, but um, I think that would have been rather hard work. To make the, the windows on the stern, I made a jig. And this is actually I made quite a few jigs, but there's, there's, there's one top left here, which allowed me to fit and glue the frames to the correct size and angles. On the bottom of this top left slide, you can see one of the lights or the frames being made, starting from the left. And then I think it's a sash being added to the top there. So you can see how they were built up. On the inboard side of these frames, a clear acetate was glued to represent glass. When I came to oil the wood, it got a little bit smudged, but actually I was quite pleased because I thought it was more effective. The slide on the right shows the job almost done, although the starboard gallery light has yet to be filled. Once the windows were complete, I began to build up the carvings, as can be seen on the top left. There, they're almost all in the, you know, the columns there, the side between the windows, apart from that one on the far right side and far left side there. Bottom left shows the taffrail being fixed into place. And then the slide on the right shows the complete stern at this stage. It was actually covered with a, a beeswax, which again, obviously is a, a very natural substance. And I thought it brought out the color of the wood very nicely. Making the quarter galleries was hard work and it included a few false starts, which is a reason why some of the wood around this area 
here in these, in these slides is looking a little bit the worse for wear. A basic structure was made, top left there, into which the window frames, first of all, were constructed, bottom left, and also you can see the wood planking has gone on on the bottom left there. And then on the right, the actual windows were fitted. Of course, these were made exactly the same way as the windows on directly on the stern there. Eventually, the garage areas were complete, decorated and roofed. The bottom boss, bottom left there, that's just, just being carved, uh, was made. And on the right, you can see the complete gallery. You can see how, how nice and shiny it's come up, actually. And it's a different quality photograph, I know, but you, you, can, you can see that. And that is just pure beeswax with a bit of turpentine. Internal fitting out. Here, work is beginning on the main deck. Beams have been placed on the left-hand side there in position on the deck clamp. They are mortised in, as can be seen on the slide to the right there. That's, that's actually the upper deck, the gun deck. And you can see how they are mortised in. And also, I made these little chocks, which add, added stability to them. I do jump from one deck to the other because it was a matter of finding the clearest photographs. Where possible, after the initial fitting of the beams into their mortises, they were removed and mortises were cut into them, top left-hand side there. Uh, you can see, and also the bottom right, you can see the mortises even clearly for the carlings. And where possible, the beams, I, I made the lodging and hanging these and attached them to the beams and then indeed put them into place. It wasn't always possible to do that. Um, sometimes the beam had to go in and then with a very fiddly job, making the knees to fit. Bottom left there you, on my little lathe, you can see I'm turning up one of the columns and on the picture on the right there, you can see the columns which are fitted underneath the beams obviously for extra support. Now the carlings and the ledges have been installed in the photograph to the left. Gaps are left, of course, for the companionways and hatchways. Also, has, attention has had to be paid as to where bits and mast partners, pumps and any other structures that extend through the deck levels are to go. And if necessary, some of those, instruct those structures have actually obviously been installed. The slide on the right shows the forward gear bits and the forward topsail bits coming up through the main, uh, the gun, and then the gun deck, which has got the beams in. And eventually, of course, it'll extend even further up. Well, it does extend further up, but the, 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 the forecastle uh, deck will uh, go uh, across them. On the left, the main bits are in place and their various sheaves. At their center is the main mast partner. You can see in there, and there are the sheaves. And to the right, it, which is a similar slide, but now the shafts for the pumps have been fitted and are there in place. In many of the deck openings, hatch combings were added, not in all of them, which you can see on the left. Into these gratings or companionways were added. To make the gratings, I made a sled to fit over my tabletop saw uh, with a strip of wood, which you can probably see, glued to it parallel with the saw blade and at the right distance from it so that the, the grooves could be put into the members of the grill. There's some gratings or a grating being made uh, on the left. Before fitting, they were given a, a roundup. And there on the right hand side, you can see the grating actually in place. Again, I think I used, uh, from what I can remember, I, I used a pear on the outside and boxwood on the inside just to make a contrast in the wood colors. These two slides show a companion way on the left there, complete. And this one is actually attached to the a combing and the guard rails before being fitted and being attached between the quarter and the gun deck. If you look very carefully, if your eyes are good, you can actually see it there in place. That's the, the quarter deck and there's the companionway going down there. 
to the right is I just showed that is because there is a ladder leading up from the gun deck to the uh, port gangway. Top left shows a waterway being shaped with the scraper as I've used them before. Before the waterway was be, installed at the edge of the deck as shown there to the right. On the left in the center of the slide is the tiller rigged. Below this is the tiller sweep and the two little blocks above it there, these are placed to guide the tiller ropes up to the helm. And you can see them all in place here as we look down at the tiller there. That's the rudder head, that's the sweep. And you can just see one of the little blocks there. Uh, to my utter amazement, once this was connected up to the ship's wheel, the mechanism actually worked and does work. On the left now, the margin plank, which runs alongside the waterway, you can just see the waterway there, and then the margin plank has been fitted and can be seen. The right slide shows how my deck planking started amidships and then worked out across the deck to the sides. Thin strips of black paper were glued onto the side of each plank as on the external hull uh, to simulate the corking and tar. They were both glued and tree nailed to the beams. The slide on the right shows the quarter deck waiting to have its tree nails trimmed and then the whole thing sanded down. I was in two minds as to what to put on to the top of these decks and in the end I decided to leave them just as bare wood because I thought to myself actually they should be really quite white they were on the real vessel. Once the deck was finished, as shown to the left, the spurketing could be laid on the ship's side, as seen here, the slide on the right. The first of these two planks above the deck actually have quite an intricate shape to them, rather like the planks uh, immediately below the main whale. And very briefly, fossil deck and stem. The cat head sits secure below the forecastle deck beams. There's the cat heads. And on their heads, I carved a face of a cat. The first rails to be fitted uh, forward are the two cheek rails, both upper and lower. Right hand side, you can see it even clearer. Top left is just the first one going on. And of course, from the top of the cheeks there, there is a spiral carved at the very top of it. They were glued and tree nailed into place. And here you can also see that the hawse pipes have been cut and lined. To the left, all the cheeks are in place and also the hawse bolsters. Next up, the making of the head rails. The mouldings for these pieces were again made the same as all my other rails with a, uh, a scraper. The head timbers were very fiddly to make. But after a lot of trial and error, I eventually got them into a decent fit. The left hand slide shows the cat head supports and the Eckling rail fitted. The head rails shown on the right were very fiddly to make. That's that one there. They're made in two pieces with the scarf joint there at the turn to ensure the grain runs along the entire rail. Here the timber uh, head timbers are finally in place and their cross pieces, top left there, have been made and fitted. Tree nails were made to fit into all of these uh, and to make them secure. Finally, the gratings, the boomkins, the heads, the seats of ease, the decorated side panels were all added. And apart from the netting, on the side, that was the head almost complete. Finally, as you can see, I'm no carver. It took ages to carve the figurehead, Pandora with her box. I used boxwood for this. The work is, is in progress on the left and there she is complete on the right. And here are two views of the after end of the forecastle deck. On the left, we're looking forward in the center of this slide is the belfry, the ship's bell, which I cast 
and directly below this, you can't see it very well, the doors open onto the galley stove. The slide on the right shows the stove, its funnel, its chimney, and again you can see a picture of the uh, belfry there. There we are, end of part one, 